Hey guys, welcome to the part two video. Here, we are covering all these items as mentioned in the previous video. Proceeding. Okay, this is a clip of me performing the move without stopping, just like in real life. And we're gonna check it out in slow motion. Oh yeah. First, I square up the cards briefly before getting my fingers into position. Next, my thumb looks for where to divide the deck in half. I realize the initial split wasn't perfect. Here, you can see me pulling over one more card to adjust. Now I'm going to square up the ends, and actually you can see I slide my fingers down right here to get a better grip. Proceeding forward, I line up the ends, keeping the outer corner a little separated, pushing the halves together, starting with the inner corner, using only light to moderate pressure. Here you see how the pharaoh started at only one corner, and then is pushed in the rest of the way. Lastly, the fingers reposition for the final bridge. The troubleshooting section. I'm going to try to anticipate some of the problems you might have and address them here. And after this, I'll show you that cool magic secret. I know it's very hard to do this. Okay. I remember being extremely frustrated when I got started. I was trying to do stuff like this and I was seeing the Pharaoh starting, but, but not quite. And then you see you like miss some cards there in the middle. First off, you can see one thing I was doing wrong there. I was farrowing from both directions, and that's because I was pushing the cards flat into each other, which I do not recommend. Again, I recommend starting here and then rotating up. You should see like a wedge shape. I mean, not like that, that would be exaggerated, but you need a little bit of something that will control that it's gonna start from the top and then travel down to the bottom. And you can't do it like this. If I've got air there, you have to compress that air. It's just a little bit of pressure but that's what's necessary just to get the cards going like that. And they kind of automatically travel from one side to the other. So if you see them moving in this side and moving in that side, stop, you're doing it wrong. Really, you wanna think about a certain number of variables and how you can play with them until you get what works. One is how much you're gonna create an angle, how little or how great. Another is how much you're going to change this angle at the same time, you know? So I'm doing this and that simultaneously. And the other thing is, yes, you could travel a little bit. I'm exaggerating, you don't wanna do that. But you could travel a little bit if you were having difficulty. Sometimes, if I see one or two cards getting stuck in the middle, to get it past that, I might like push down a little so the cards traveled uh, in this direction just a bit. Another thing to be aware of is you don't want the cards too much uh, beveled like that. That's not gonna work. You see this one's, uh, that's more flat. And if I were doing this, you could accidentally end up with the cards beveled in some weird direction. So even if you were trying to do an angle, it would basically be flat. You'd have to do more of an angle. Oh, and this would be a great moment to mention. If you're having difficulty, you might try uh, flipping the deck over and doing them face up because of the way some decks are cut, the farrowing direction could be a lot easier if it was traditionally cut or modern cut to farrow starting from the face up cards. So definitely give that a try, especially if your cards are newer, then it'll make more of a difference. You also don't want like a little lip like this. You don't want the cards popping up at the beginning. They should be flat all the way across. You should really examine that so that you can create this. And see, there's like a little bit of a curve there so I can push more on the top to, to flatten that out more. And just, just wanna let them ease right into each other like that. If you're pushing and you see the cards moving like this, look up at the top. If you, if you see something like this situation up here, you're doing it wrong. That means that you were holding the cards too loosely here. I'm not saying the entire thing has to be in an iron block. You want this side loose, like a paintbrush, but you want this side 
locked in like the spine of a book with like stitches going through it and same thing with the right side but going in the opposite direction it's like you've got two paintbrush tips and you're pushing them together maybe your cards are making a clicking sound when you push them together I've seen some people do this where it's like like a click anyways you don't want to be just be jamming them together like that. I would say if you're experiencing this kind of problem, you are pushing with too much force in this direction. You want to push in a little, but not too much. And I know your pain. When I was first learning, I got frustrated and I thought, just gotta, just force them in. But try to avoid doing that if possible and think more about the correct technique. Your cards. The type and condition. Start learning with the right type of cards. As I mentioned, I put a link in the description below. And don't use cards that look like this, okay? If you practice throwing them against the wall or you drop them all over the ground, I mean, I just exaggerated that, but for example, it could be a lot more subtle that you wouldn't see unless you were looking closely that there was a little ding on the corner and the cards really aren't going to interleave well unless you're able to flatten that out, kind of pull it out or just uh, have newer cards that aren't damaged. See, that's a little bit better. Old deck versus new deck. In this portion of the video, I'm going to open a brand new deck of playing cards and explain exactly how that affects farrowing. Plus, I'll give you specific techniques that will help you to farrow an old deck versus a new deck. This deck is fairly new. I've used it for about one week and you can see it's in pretty good condition. In comparison, let me show you an older deck that I've been using for months. This thing is a little bit disgusting. Some dings where I threw the cards or they dropped on the floor. And this one here, right there, is actually bent. So you could see how that would cause a problem. In fact, I guess I'll go ahead and show you with a brand new deck of playing cards because some of you guys might be going through that experience right now. They are very particular when you've got a new deck of cards. Get rid of the ad cards, get rid of the jokers. We've got it in brand new deck order for now. Ah, love the smell of a new deck of cards. So look at the edges of these. That's perfect. That's the definition of perfect cards. And I'm guessing it's gonna be easier to pharaoh these face up, but I'll try face down. By face down, I mean they started in this position. So I'll divide them in half. Oops. And here's a funny thing. You can see that I didn't divide it in half because if I did, I would have got the king of clubs because in the middle of the deck are the kissing kings. So there's that. Now trying to pharaoh them together. Oh yeah, that's hard. They're just not going. Try one more time. I should be able to make it work if I really believe. Oh, yeah, got it. So that was tough. And now I'll show you what it's like if I were to do them face up. It's gonna be so much easier. By the way, this is the condition of the cards now. I've divided them perfectly into black and red. So now I'm gonna divide it in half. Try it again with the cards face up. Let's give this a shot in here really close. Yeah, it just goes in a lot easier in that direction because of the way they were created in the factory. Just to be clear, your cards could be totally different depending on the way they were printed in the factory. So you should try to pharaoh them face up or face down and see which way feels better when you're dealing with a brand new deck. Now the cards are exactly red and black all the way through. Also interesting. But Jason, I only have old cards and I wanna practice right now. Okay, then you can do this. You just have to be really aware after you've divided the cards in half that you are putting lots of pressure. You really have to do a little more extra pressure here to compress the natural gaps you're gonna have in more old bent up cards. So I can still do this with old cards. I just gotta push harder with this finger to compress that air. Jason, I can only ferro my cards in one direction, but I need to be able to do it in both directions. If your cards are fairly brand new, as I mentioned earlier, 
you can probably only do them in one direction like this and it, they won't work very well if you're going the opposite way. So what happens if you got a deck of cards and they only fare this way but that's really not appropriate for you because you don't want to flash the bottom cards to everyone if you're doing magic trick. You just want to have the backs showing. Well in that case I recommend just breaking the cards in. And very quickly what I do is I'll do the regular riffle shuffle. Then I'll do some overhand shuffling. And if you think about it, as the cards are sliding past each other, they are slowly smoothing off the edges of a new deck, which is definitely gonna help with being able to pharaoh in both directions. I might do some dribbling. I might do some shooting the cards. I'll do some cuts. Bend them the opposite way a bit. More shuffling. Shuffling upside down the opposite way. And then just literally doing pharaoh shuffles will help break them in because it kind of bends them and gets them used to going one way and then the other way. I'll pharaoh one way, I'll flip it over, I'll try to pharaoh the opposite direction too. And these don't have to be perfect, you know, you're just uh, trying to get the cards a little bit less stiff and through all this handling action and even just touching the tops of the cards with your fingers, you're going to help smooth them out. Probably something like 10 to 20 minutes of that would be good enough. Oh, and also doing the ribbon spread, because why not? Oh, and I also fan them. I don't know if that helps, but I do this a lot, like a maniac. And now, as promised, the cool magic secret. There's something very nice you can do with the perfect pharaoh shuffle, and this is what it is. Right now I'm dividing the deck into black and red to better demonstrate this principle. But essentially, if you do eight out pharaohs in a row, the deck will return to its original order that it started in. Please note, this only works if you have exactly 52 cards in your deck. If you're missing even just one, ain't gonna work. I will show you what I mean. So I do need to do this perfectly and split them exactly in half. And look at this, you see? This is the top of the deck. If I do a pharaoh shuffle where this top stays on top, like this, see this top card is still on top? That's called an out pharaoh. And actually the original bottom card is still on the bottom, the five of spades. So if I were to do an in pharaoh, it's just the opposite. Basically, I make sure the top card goes second from the top, like that. You see it going under. So forget about doing in pharaohs. <laughs> you need to do eight perfect out pharaohs. Of course, I will speed this up a little bit to save you time, but you can see already that on doing the first perfect pharaoh shuffle, we have black red all the way through. Alternating. So I'm gonna speed this up and do four more perfect out pharaohs. Okay, and that was five, by the way. Still have the same bottom card because every out pharaoh keeps the top card on top and the bottom card on bottom. But look what's been happening to the middle cards. Right now, they look pretty random, pretty mixed. Especially if I were just to show people like this, kind of more messily, you can say, oh, the cards are in no particular order but they are. And this is where the magic trick begins. Clarification. You're gonna do this preparation before you go to do the magic trick to the spectator. Step one, put the deck into the order you want it to end up in at the very end. Step two, do five perfect out pharaohs in a row before you go talk with the spectator. Step three, take the cards, put them into the card box, and now you're ready to go up to your spectator and perform. Because now what you're gonna do is... So you can do some false shuffles with the deck in this condition, and if you can do three perfect out pharaohs, that will bring you five plus three to eight, and then at the end you'll be able to show the cards are in perfect order. So for example, all I've got to do is three more. I do a false cut like that, and now I'll do one out pharaoh. I'm not gonna show the cards again now because at this point they might start to become too obvious that they're in a pattern. You can see that they're like in blocks of red and black, but instead I would keep doing some false cuts and shuffles like this. Do my second out pharaoh. One more false cut. And my last perfect out pharaoh. 
Now you can say whatever you want and simply show that you have put the cards into a perfect order, despite all your shuffling and cutting. So that original order could be whatever you want. I just happen to have them all black on one side and all red on the other. Is that not cool? Also, I have a tutorial on my Patreon with a really fun magic trick I learned at the Renaissance Festival years ago, and it specifically uses the perfect pharaoh. You only have to do it once in this trick. So if you'd like, feel free to check that out. Plus, you'd be helping to support me tremendously. At any rate, I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time.